Vanessa Lipson. Uh, welcome to Cap at Home. Today I'm making a water lily salt bill sculpture. Um, this is the one I made the other day. Uh, and it's going to go pretty similar to the other uh, sculptures that uh, I've showed you how to make out of salt dough. You start by mixing your dough. I have a cup of flour. And then I'm going to add half a cup of salt. Going to mix it pretty thoroughly together. And then I'm slowly going to add some water and then I are going to want to have a little bit more than half a cup of water for this project so that um, we can add some food coloring to it later to paint the leaves. So I'm just going to make sure that when I fill the water there's a little bit more than half a cup so you want a little bit left in the bottom of the measuring cup when you're done mixing the flour in the bowl. So I'm just going to just start off by mixing the water in slowly. And you can see it's already starting to clump up. For this project, you're also going to need a pair of kitchen scissors, like I said you'll need food coloring, a rolling pin, a paintbrush, and a butter knife. This is already coming together pretty well. Michigan has a lot of natural occurring marshes and sort of swamp land. And if you get to visit anything like that, you'll see that there are lots of little lily pads and the lily pads have flowers that look kind of like this. Adding just a little bit more. I'm just starting to get in here with my hands. It's still pretty sticky at this point. to roll the dough into a ball in the bowl and you can kind of get the dry bits of dough from the sides there. So I'm going to start by kneading the dough kind of in on itself. I have my work surface here covered with wax paper that will make it a little bit easier to clean up when I'm done. And as you can see, this dough is coming along pretty well. I mean, it's not really sticking that much to my hand, so you know it's about ready. And then this recipe, which is one cup of flour, one half cup of salt, and one half cup of water will make about two of these water lily sculptures. Alright, 
right, so the next thing I'm going to do once my dough is pretty well formed is I'm going to portion it off into a few different sizes of balls here, dough balls. We want two that are about an inch and a half and two that are about two inches and two that are about three inches in diameter. So you're going to have six dough balls all together and each set of two should match up pretty, pretty well. So I've got four. Now I have five. So I'm just going to separate this biggest one into two. So these are going to be my smallest two dough balls. And you can kind of guess as long as you have six dough balls that are kind of even, you'll do fine. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take the smallest dough ball and the largest dough ball and set them off to the side and we're going to start with the two medium sized ones. We're going to start by pressing them down onto the wax paper covered surface. And you want them to stay pretty round. Also, your oven should be preheating to about 200 degrees Fahrenheit to completely cook and dry out your sculptures or you can also choose to air dry these uh, salt dough sculptures but it takes a little bit longer it takes a couple like about two days for them to fully dry but they do get to more or less the same consistency whether you air dry them or bake them, it's up to you. All right, so this is pretty well rounded out. And I'm just gonna work a little bit more on this one. Now I'm gonna take the rolling pin and just kind of roll it out. So we have two pretty similarly sized round slabs of the salt dough. I'm going to set those aside and then I'm going to come back to the two smallest size dough balls and I'm going to go into my box of food coloring and choose a color. I'm going to do one red and I'm going to do one blue. And I'm going to set the food coloring aside. Then I'm going to take my dough ball and make a little depression with my thumb into the center. So you have just like a little pocket. And then I'm going to do that with my other one as well. So both of them have like a little cup shape. And you use your thumb and your forefinger and you just kind of pinch them open and if you want to kind of make them flat so that they sit nicely you can do that for right now. I'm going to take my red food coloring and I'm going to make two little drops. Be careful not to use too much food coloring or it's just going to make a much bigger mess. 
And I'm going to take my blue food coloring, and I'm going to make two little drops in the other one. And then you just kind of like pinch it shut, and you just kind of begin to knead the dough ball. And as you knead it, and you roll it kind of in your hand, you'll start to see the food coloring kind of mix into the dough. Like this. And it's starting to turn pink. And just kind of keep mixing the food coloring into the dough. And you get kind of this cool swirl pattern. It's kind of fun to watch the color mix in. Now this project can get kind of messy, so it's a good idea to wear an apron. Alright, this one's pretty well mixed. So once you get your first dough ball pretty well mixed, you can set it in the center of your slab, your round slab, and move on to the next one. And then you're going to kind of just keep kneading it until you get the food coloring to mix thoroughly into the dough ball. It's pretty fun to watch the swirls kind of just overtake the dough ball. Okay, that's starting to look pretty cool. Mix it a little bit more. This is a really pretty, vibrant color of blue. Alright. I'm going to set that over in the middle of this one. Alright, and now you're going to roll out the largest size of your dough ball. And I like to start by kind of using my fingertips and the heels of my hand to flatten the dough. And you don't want to mash it into your work surface or it'll get stuck and be difficult to work with. So I just like to pick it up and flip it over and just kind of move it around periodically just to make sure it doesn't stick. thickness, you can roll it out with your rolling pin and it's just going to be super easy. And so this slab, you need it to be just a little bit bigger so that it goes over your dough balls that you put food coloring in and also over the round slab underneath.
stretch it out. Ah, too stretchy. <laughs> then we can kind of like gently put it back together again. Thing I really like working with mediums like this is if you accidentally poke a hole or tear the dough, it's pretty easy just to kind of put it back together. So I'm going to start with this one and just very carefully drape it over the round colored ball in the center and then just sort of with the pads of my fingers tuck it in and around and just kind of flatten it out again and it's pretty well covering the bottom piece just got a little bit out of control <laughs> Move this one closer so I can see it better. I guess I'm gonna start this one over. Super easy just to kind of start over. It gets a little bit out of hand. to be about a quarter of an inch thick, both the top and bottom layers, and you just kind of tuck them. You'll tuck the top layer underneath and around the ball in the middle. And once you have them even, and they're looking pretty round, you take your butter knife and you're going to start bisecting the dough. And you go the other way. And you do want to cut all the way through at this point. And then, once you have your eight even portions, you're going to very gently just cut them, or mark them. You don't want to cut this time. You just want to make little lines so you don't need to go all the way through the dough. This is how you're going to make the veining on the leaves of your water lily. And then once you have those in sections, you're going to make a sort of diagonal depressions and the teeth of your butter knife are just going to be very, barely visible. You'll see that they make like these really cool little marks. So you're just going to go through and you make your little 
hash marks, diagonal marks, and this is going to end up making a leaf shape. You just alternate the direction you go every other section. shapes and you kind of put them together. Alright, once you have all of your texture shapes, you're going to take two segments and you're going to pinch them together into a leaf shape. The center part is going to sort of stay connected. You really only have to pinch out the second half of the leaf. The middle part just kind of stays together. Alright, then once you have that part done, you'll take your scissors and you'll make little cuts through the dough. And you'll expose the color on the inside. You don't want to cut all the way through. You just want to cut about halfway through the center dough ball because you want it to stay pretty well together. And then it just makes these cute little sort of flower petals on the inside of the leaf ring.
And then, with the last little bit of water, oh, I used it. It's okay to get more. And then just another little bit of water. Not very much, just a tiny little bit. It's probably less than a tablespoon of water. And you'll take your green food coloring. And just drop in a little bit. I use two drops. And then you'll take your paintbrush and just kind of swirl it around and mix the food coloring and the water together. And you'll have a nice shade of green that you just go ahead and paint on the leaves. Pretty cool when you can make your own sculpting medium from home. You just kind of make anything you like, really. So this recipe does make two of these flowers. baking sheet. I'm going to take this one out of the way because it's already cooked. And there you have two water lily sculptures. <laughs> Enjoy! So it's also really important that you take the time to clean up your tools. Um, a lot of paint brushes are made with glue to hold the bristles on. So it works really well if you use cold water instead of warm water because the cold water isn't going to uh, remove the glue as fast. So just make sure that you do a really good job cleaning up and you put all your tools away and then you'll be ready for next time. Alright, see you next week.